Hey, what's up guys? Tony here and welcome to another episode of Tuesdays with Tony. I'm going to do my best to make sure this is a legit Tuesdays with Tony where I'm going to post it on Tuesday and not get it out on Wednesday. And as I'm sitting here, it's Monday at 930 at night. Uh, normally I would be playing Doom right now, but I'm pretty inspired to do a commentary and I would love to get it out. And I think what I might do is even save it uh, until I can get some Medal of Honor Warfighter footage for you guys. Good, bad, or ugly. So that way I can do a little Medal of Honor Warfighter for you guys on the um, the day that the embargo is lifted, which is 9 a.m. for me on the Pacific um, Pacific Standard Time. So for me, 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, for you guys on the East Coast, it'll be, what, 9, 10, 11, 12. And um, yeah, I can add. I can add 3 to 9 really easily. See that? And then, I don't know. I think it's... Six o'clock in the morning for Hawaii. Uh, I don't know what time it is for Alaska. Maybe it's a couple hours. Maybe it's three hours. Anyways, so if you guys are uh, somewhere within the country, you can orient yourself based upon me if you are a video maker. And um, so, anyways, so hopefully this will be a Medal of Honor Warfighter video. Uh, if not, if I get too antsy and want to post this thing up tonight, then uh, just so I make sure that I get it out on a Tuesday so you guys are all fired up for a Tuesdays with Tony on a Tuesday. Um, then it'll most likely be some Battlefield 3. But uh, I might just, you know, show a little self-restraint here and, and make it Medal of Honor Warfighter for you guys. So, anyways, what I wanted to do, and sorry for that kind of a long intro, but I wanted to do is do a commentary based on space. I want to talk about space. And uh, it's a huge topic, I know. And I'm going to try to boil it down to probably like a couple of points. Um... I'm going to try not to get straight too far because it, it is, <laughs> it's a topic that I'm passionate about and it's a topic that I think it could be talked about from several, several different angles and it could be one that goes just keeps going and there could be such a good back and forth conversation about it um, that it kind of never ends. And it's one that I'm so passionate about that I could make five or six videos about space. Um, I am <laughs> by no means an expert on space. I'm just a guy who I, I took... Um, for my lore division stuff, uh, we had to take a biological science and, and a physical science. So I took astronomy for, for my physical science and I took an astronomy lab class for my physical science lab class. So it's a, it's an area that I, I'm, as far as a survey course, I'm versed in. I definitely do not have the math background. I, um, it's funny because my, my uh, ancient history professor, my uh, ancient Greek history professor today, he had, he had mentioned, he had sort of... Um, he just sort of told us that today that he always wanted to be an astronomer and he just got weeded out because he was terrible at math. He just could not hack it with the math. And that's the way I am. I, I got in back into college. Um, I mean, the first thing I actually did, <laughs> the first thing I did is I actually got into theater and I was doing a lot of theater work. So I was kind of, I was, I don't know, I guess you could say like an actor. I mean, I don't like to really consider myself an actor because I never really took it that serious. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it and I did and I have a degree in theater arts. But when I came back to school, I really wanted to do astronomy. I had such a passion for astronomy. Like um, when the History Channel used to show the universe, I, I was really dedicated on watching the universe every Tuesday night at nine o'clock and I watched it you know, three or four seasons. I don't remember how many seasons it had, um, but I used to watch it. And then when I had Netflix um, for a little bit, I had Netflix for a little bit. I was kind of piggybacking off my older brother, but I watched a lot of the rewatch those episodes. And then I watched a lot of the ancient aliens. And now <laughs> the ancient aliens thing, it, it's more or less a, like a fun little thing. You could just listen to this, watch these guys talk about how they interpret uh, these ancient drawings and it's sort of a reinterpretation um, it, it's, it's entertaining in itself. Uh, I don't particularly buy into the philosophy to, or to the theory just because of the fact it takes away from human achievement because suddenly you're taking, you know, human ingenuity and human achievement achievements and attributing those to, um, extraterrestrial aliens from, well, not from the future, but aliens from that time period who had a huge hand in, in pushing mankind forward, technologically speaking. So I don't really like that because it devalues human accomplishments. So, but there, but anyways, the point is, is it's they're really entertaining to watch And the whole idea of life on another planet, uh, if uh, on another planets, uh, fascinates me and especially life out in the universe. It fascinates me. So like the guys who are running uh, SETI right now, you know, the search for extraterrestrial life, um, those people I think are doing a fascinating thing. And I really hope one day we do pick up a signal because 
I, I don't know what it is about mankind, but we, we want to know that we're not alone in this vast universe that we live in. And I'm among those people. I would like to know that there is life out there, even if it's just bacterial life, you know? Like when they when they found what they thought was bacterial life on Mars, it's like, holy crap, you know, fossilized bacteria. Life does exist off of this solid blue world. Well, I shouldn't say solid, but I mean, this, you know, rocky, you know, ocean, watery. Oh, <laughs> Aaron tried like simply to anyways, this blue orb that is the third planet from the sun. There's life here. And so far from from our standpoint, this is the only place in the solar system and the universe from our standpoint that has life and so life is really precious from from where we sit it's very precious because it doesn't exist is it exist anywhere else and so uh to find life on another planet or you know uh, even bacterial life on another planet or a moon um or i should say a satellite technically uh be specific here so another a satellite of a planet uh it would be fascinating i think it would be completely fascinating um, there might be some cultural implications uh, that erupt from that, but I think for the most part, a lot of us would kind of be like, wow, there's life off of this planet. That's cool. So anyways, uh, <laughs> I already got off on a tangent. Wow. Um, my question for you guys is whether or not you think that uh, that humans should continue to fund space exploration because I know that's kind of a, a hot button topic right now uh, or at least it was I should say a couple years back it seemed like because when they kept cutting NASA's budget but the idea is, is that do you think that people, uh, that mankind in general, should continue to invest in space programs um, when there's so many issues that we have to deal with here on our planet? And uh, an argument could be made for both ways, so there's no real right answer to this. Um, I sit on the side that I believe that that uh, organizations such as NASA, um, I can't remember what the ja or yeah, there's Japanese one, there's a Chinese space program and then there's a euro space program and i don't remember so excuse me for not knowing the names of those organizations but i think they have a place because if you take a look at say the context of the cold war um president kennedy in 1960 challenged the, the country our country united states um so i mean for you guys who aren't americans you know the u.s i hate i always hate saying my country or our country i should say um uh, you know implying that all you guys who are watching are americans but um so president kennedy um challenged the united states to you know send a man to the moon and bring him safely back to earth within the decade and they did that we did that well the u.s did that and so uh, during that period, I mean, they, there was just a slew of technological advances. And even before that, when they were sending probes out, you know, digital cameras, you know, when you think about sending images, you know, uh, to Instagram or Facebook or text messaging pictures around, you don't stop to think about that these technologies were developed in the 60s, um, the 50s and 60s, uh, as a way of sending information from these probes that were hundreds of thousands of miles away from earth that aren't coming back um even images from the hubble telescope you know they're, they're digital images it's not like someone's going up there and picking up film and, and bringing it back to be developed so the uh uh and it's it's unfortunate but war and we saw this in every war um the war develops and or stirs innovation and in the case of the cold war it stirred you know space exploration and um technologies to deal with space which drove uh, the private sector because they benefited from these these technological advances so uh what i want to know and i of course i've already asked one of these questions but um one thing that i thought about today is uh is because like i said i'm doing the, the let's play of doom 3 i'm just like what would it be like i mean and how many people would want to live on another world um you know, what if, what if we started manned missions back to the moon? I mean, does that seem like, you know, because the idea is like, well, we've been to the moon. We don't need to go back to the moon. But what if we decided to build a colony on the moon? I mean, how would that go? I mean, it would be so complex because of the nations involved. And I think it's like Antarctica. You know, so many nations claim a piece of Antarctica, but nobody lives down there, obviously, because um, it's just not practical. But Take the moon, for instance. I mean, it's not a practical place to live, but people have been talking about trying to put moon bases there for 
I think 20 years or something like that. And recently I heard someone say something about, well, we need to put people on the moon. And it would be a fascinating thing. If someone from NASA came to me and they said, we're looking for people to start a colony on the moon, um, we would like you to go. Or maybe if they ask for volunteers and you submit an application and they sort through the application, they kind they ask you to uh, come in for an interview or something. And you're like, okay, you are in the final selection process. Um, to go to the moon like I would do that I don't know about you guys but I would do that I would love the opportunity to go to the moon it's something that I've dreamed about since I was a kid it's just like oh my gosh I'm sorry I should say dreamt I dreamt about when I was a kid um and it, it's it, it, even now as I think about it there's this picture on my iPhone and I can visualize it because it's such a like I'm a visual person and it, it is a picture of the, of an earth rise from the moon taken from one of the um, Apollo astronauts towards the end it was in the 70s when it was taken because it was color picture and it was just beautiful quality and actually I think they I think the Apollo 11 had color pictures I, I have to go look I think they had color pictures actually uh, color film I mean, it wasn't like a new novel thing because uh, they had had color since, I think, the 1920s um, transparencies. Anyways, the point is, is that this is a beautiful picture of an Earth rise taken from the lunar surface. And that image has always captivated my imagination and the idea of, of seeing this object. I mean, because we're sitting here and we take for granted the fact that we've got, a you know, a, 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 another orbiting body in this unit the solar system right there i mean you can you know you look at it and i think you can cover it with your pinky finger or something outstretched it covers your pinky finger um and your pinky finger can cover the moon uh or maybe it's your thumb thumb or pinky anyways you can try it out it's one of those two i think it's the pinky finger that seems kind of small maybe it's the moon. anyways <laughs> anyways you're, you can't see me but i'm sitting here playing with my my hand like trying to figure out the distance i think it's anyways it's one of the two <laughs> But the idea is we have this this world that's probably I think it's like three or four days you know space travel away, it's far you know by car standards and you know far by airplane standards, but relatively close you know speaking in terms of of, of our solar system, and I think it'd be completely fascinating to be looking from the moon out to Earth and seeing this blue blue ball because when we look at stars now we, we can see mars really clearly you can see venus very clearly you can see jupiter um of course you can see the sun it's the biggest object in the, st in the sky um you go, of course you can see the moon and it's just it, it, for me it just it, it there's this level of fascination that has always been there um but here's the thing on the flip side though i wouldn't see myself going to mars uh, I mean, it's like six to nine months away, one way, um, you know, I mean, but I am fascinated by it. Like when you see the pictures from the rovers and, um, you know, it was a spirit opportunity and then whatever the newest one, they just landed there. You're just like, my God, that is a, a piece of technology that we built on Earth. We shot it across space. We hit our target, which is probably really hard to do i mean you got to hit one moving target it's got to hit another moving target from such a vast distance we were able to hit that i mean that's pretty awesome in itself but to have a rover on the ground taking pictures sending back images and they're stitching them together in these beautiful panoramas um it, you can't help but just be captivated by that um but would i want to go there and live i don't know maybe but i think i'd choose something that is a little closer to home but on that note I mean, there are, there are theories, and, and the one that I've heard the most about is to terraform Mars, is to put these these uh, carbon dioxide factories, if you will, uh, all around the planet and, and try to create this runaway greenhouse effect by introducing more and more and more carbon dioxide, uh, while at the same time bringing plant life there to feed upon the carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. And so the idea is to turn the relatively weak atmosphere of Mars into a thicker, warmer atmosphere that will capture sunlight and retain it. Um, the hard part is, is, from what I understand, that Mars is geologically dead, so it's got a very weak um, uh, 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 electromagnetic field around it. So from what I understand, the... Uh, the reason why the Mars is a dead planet now is because it just got its electromagnetic field knocked away and then the solar winds just completely stripped the atmosphere to what it is today and the planet died. So the idea is it's like maybe we can just bring that atmosphere back and make it habitable for, for mankind and that'd be cool too. I just so 
anyways, I'm kind of off. I, I like lost track to be honest of where I was going with this, but basically uh, <laughs> I have this, this passion for space and, uh, I could go on and on about, you know, intelligent life and, you know, black holes and, you know, space and time and warp drive and, you know, these things I've, I've just spent a lot of time, not, not, not necessarily reading about, but you just kind of watch things about it and you, you pick up some tidbits here and there. But it's such a fascinating topic for me and I thought I'd want to share that with you guys, especially since, since I'm doing the Doom 3 Let's Play. Um, but I'd be interested in hearing from what you guys think. Uh, do you think that, that uh, you know, continuing to fund space exploration is worth it for mankind or do you think we really need to start focusing upon issues that deal with us here on Earth and sort of let space go be space you know we can deal with space at a much different time much later time or are you of the mind where uh, maybe we should continue to fund space programs and uh, and see where it takes us technologically speaking um, maybe you know cultural experience like I was mentioning you know going to the moon putting colonies on the moon uh, maybe making them multinational colonies where we can see if, if, if humans can truly put aside their differences to live in such a hostile environment um, that I think would be interesting. So, um, things like that, you know, and, and space related stuff. I'm, I'm open to talk about anything in the comment section and I'll write paragraphs upon paragraphs, um, about this. Cause I love this topic so much. Uh, so anyways, guys, um, I guess I'm coming up on actually quite a long commentary. So, uh, I'll cut it off here. And, um, so anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you enjoyed this episode and, uh, and I'll talk to you guys later.